Turnpike Sports is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I'm Dave Weishaddle, and as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle. Doug, how was your betting week? I didn't do a lot of betting this week. No, it was kind of a busy week in a lot of other places, and yeah. you know, it was just one of those things where sometimes you have a slow betting week, and that's all. I mean, I watched some of the Olympics. I didn't bet on anything. Yeah, me, me too. I haven't bet on the Olympics. I, uh, I, I was watching uh, the NF- NBA draft, and uh, I know there was a lot of people betting. I, I saw a lot of the betting shows. They had the over-under of the spot where some of the uh, players would be taken, but I never jumped on that. So it was a relatively uh, bet-free week for me. No, it, you know, I think the NBA draft is a unique animal as compared to, like, the NFL draft. Yeah, the NFL draft is more of a big event. I mean, that that for me that is the draft. When you say the draft, I always think NFL. I well, mean, NBA, you know, it's interesting to watch, especially you're following your teams, you, you want to see how the Sixers or the Knicks or the Nets do and things like that. But, you know, I I uh, Throwing bets down on the NBA draft wasn't I wasn't really motivated not to, to not do to that. belittle the draft. No, 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 no. But I, I just never uh, I wasn't motivated to throw any money on the draft. No, and uh, again, it's one of those event betting uh, situations. I guess you can call it because I I just I don't know enough about the individuals involved, and that's on me. I don't do enough research mm-hmm. to know the kids coming out in the draft. Well, we got a great show coming up for you. We have a book report and also a Beat in the House segment. And for my interview, I'm talking with Brian Pempis from usbets.com and Better Collective. We're going to go through some of the big gambling stories of the week. It's been a busy week in sports, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. Okay, normally when we talk sports betting in this exit, we usually have some kind of big deal that was made or some kind of event. Uh, we've actually got a rare occurrence due to sports betting. Okay. Uh, this is has to do with European soccer. It's a very rare situation that's occurred, and it's technically not even actual sports betting. It has to do with sports betting data. Uh, this is very interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's the first of its kind that I've heard of. Maybe maybe it happened before, but no, I've never heard of something like this happening. But, 18, uh, go ahead. 18 countries represented by a group called the European Leagues have, have issued a new tender to find a suitable betting data partner. Okay. Uh, the, it, the European Leagues is a group that represents the commercial interests of soccer leagues across the European region. Uh, you're looking at 18 countries, 81 matches, 8,100 matches. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. That's a huge number. 8,100 matches per year. Uh, for, and they're looking for a three- to five-year deal to make the rights available beginning in 2022. So they're just putting this uh, 
putting the call out to all the data companies out there. So what were they, accepting bids kind of thing? Is that what they want to do? It, basically, or? it's an RFP. Okay. It's a request right. for a proposal. Uh, they're looking for either one exclusive partner or they're looking for several non-exclusive deals with numerous partners. Look, we all know data drives the sports betting industry, so this is really important. Well, you know, it, you said data drives the industry. Yeah, I mean, you have, uh, what was it, Genius Sports doing the deal with the NFL. That was huge. Yep. A lot of states are requiring official league data, mm-hmm. you know, for their sports books. And uh, overseas, it's becoming the same way. Official data has to be there in place for a lot of the uh, sports books to operate. And, uh, you know, it's it's just one of those things where this is a very rare occurrence for 18 different countries. We've got, uh, let me give the list here, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, the Netherlands, Portugal, Austria, Romania, Greece, Israel, Serbia, Slovakia, Finland, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Switzerland, Norway, and Sweden. Those are, that's a very unusual pairing of countries that want to pool their resources well together. it's unusual because they're all working together to get this data deal so uh no no it's important like i said that's how important sports betting has become to the industry it's also one of the more unique aspects of soccer versus what we have in the united states because there there aren't too many different professional leagues out there in the united states sure you have yeah. the nfl that's it for football basically yeah, yeah. Major League Baseball. I mean, you have the minor leagues. That would be like the Major League Baseball system and the minor league baseball system combining to do a, a data rights deal. I gotta be honest. I, I am I am amazed at the amount of soccer leagues there are in Europe. So uh, you know, I, I always uh, looking through the television and seeing what soccer matches are on, and you, you, the the Premier League and the other leagues and whatever league, and it, it's it's really interesting to keep them straight. You know? And and also, it's not just men's leagues now. We're okay. talking about women's matches. They're talking about the women's leagues from Germany and okay, Denmark. Okay, th- this is involved in the pulling yes. and looking for the data deal. Yep. Okay. And also the third-tier German German men's league and even some of the summer leagues that right. play. So there See, like are, I said, there's a lot of leagues in Europe. There's a lot more soccer being played <laughs> yeah, than know, there right? is some of the other sports. I mean, we have fall football with the NFL. We don't have spring football yet. I mean, we've got a couple minor leagues coming up. Now, I don't mean minor, minor, but smaller leagues coming independent leagues coming up for the NFL, I mean, for football. But really, I mean, your, European soccer is year-round, which is amazing. Well, and also for people who like betting early in the morning in the U.S., it's a perfect thing because, you know, I, right now we're recording this in the morning. If I look at my uh, sports books, <laughs> there, there's soccer matches going on now. So uh, and you can pull the plug on a uh, bet like nine ten o'clock in the morning here. Well, so. let's see what happens with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to see if they get one exclusive – betting rights partner versus the, the non-exclusive deals. The non-exclusives probably would happen quicker than an exclusive. Sure. Exit two. We're going to go over to eSports with a first by first uh, by Fortnite. Okay. Uh, what did Fortnite do? Well, Fortnite, uh, let's see, back in Chapter 2, Season 3 of Fortnite, for people who follow Fortnite, you know what that means. I don't know what that means, honestly. Chapter 2, is that a uh, season. V- version of it? Okay, It, it, it must be a different map. Because right. uh, Fortnite occurs on a map. Every every uh, tournament, every season has a specific map that they play on. Okay, sa- that so Chapter 2 is the second map of exactly. the whatever they're right. calling it. Okay. Now... Epic Games, which is the owner and publisher of Fortnite, in season chapter two, season three. I'm trying to get the storyline. Chapter straight two, here. season three. Yes. Oh my god! All right, they All right. flooded the map, and what happened was when the water receded, they created a, a sort of some changes to the map where they they included some roadways. Instead of having people running around just shooting each other in teams, all like the normal Fortnite stuff, how it started. Sure. They they incorporated vehicles, uh, namely uh, sports cars, uh, semi trucks, sedans, pickup trucks. Uh oh, do, do do I smell a product placement thing going on here now? Well, I wouldn't call this necessarily okay. product placement. Right. This is a partnership. Oh, okay, up. all right. Now, none of the previous vehicles were based on real world cars. This, these were all made up vehicles, different setups, all that stuff. So Fortnite has gone ahead and partnered with Ferrari. Wow, okay. 
Which I, I find incredible because I'm assuming Ferrari has been trying so hard to get into the eSports uh, world for so long now. Uh, I know they do a whole bunch of eSports simulations. They have some other races that they're involved in eSports-wise. So now when you jump into Fortnite, you're going to be able to control a Ferrari? Is that what you're we're talking about You're going to be able to drive a Ferrari 296 GTB model. All right. And it's going to be specifically altered, designed, however you want it, formatted for Fortnite. And I'm assuming Ferrari will have their name all over the place. Oh, everywhere. everywhere. Everywhere, okay. Uh, and also, this, like I said, this is the first time Fortnite has done something along these lines. They've done crossovers with brands before. They've done movies, comic books, video games. I tell you, Ferrari's pretty cool, though. I mean, yeah. I don't remember another deal... In sports, well, I'm sure it was sports and racing and things like that, but not something in the esports realm with like a race car of that caliber. You know, well, this this is actually a consumer car. Well, it's a consumer car, but you know, when I think of Ferrari, I think of high performance kind of thing. So it's uh, well, you've got a, is it is this a new kind of Ferrari kind just of just introduced this luxury year. kind of sedan? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, is no, Ferrari this, making this, one of this, those things? This was just introduced this year. It's a brand new Ferrari. Okay, uh, V6 turbocharged engine. Uh, the ele- and it's an electric motor, Ferrari. Oh, okay. Eight hundred and eighteen right. horsepower electric motor in this Ferrari. Really? I didn't. And I didn't know Ferraris uh, made electric vehicles. Well, they're world conscious. Now. I, good. So good you for got, them. You got to be green uh, now. You got to offer this stuff. Yeah, and and it's a great promotion for Ferrari. I would assume. You know, Fortnite. It's right in front of you. It's uh, getting the younger crowd. You know, if you ever want to drive a Ferrari, you can now on. Fortnite. Well, a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford this Ferrari uh, because it starts. The prices start at three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Wow! So if you w- ever well, wanted to drive a Ferrari or even own a Ferrari, yeah. you can do it virtually. Yeah, go go to Fortnite. <laughs> you get your Ferrari. Uh, three hundred thirty thousand dollars, huh? Okay, I'll pl- I'll play Fortnite instead. Exit three. Okay, we're going to do a little trademark roundup today. Okay. We've got two trademarks to talk about, kind of interesting stories behind each one of them. The Milwaukee Bucks have filed two trademarks, and normally when a basketball team or a pro team files a trademark, it's not really big news. Yeah. This is big because, or I should say interesting, they filed two trademarks, Bucks and Six and Bucks and Six. Now, the difference is Six is spelled out in one of them. Okay, so both both of them dealt with Bucks and Six. And I, that's, I guess that's celebrating their championship, correct? These were filed before they won the championship. Oh, by the Bucks? By the Bucks. Oh, 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 what a prediction, During huh? the finals, they filed them. Ooh. <laughs> you know what? I'm surprised the uh, Phoenix Suns didn't find that out. And uh, that that's great bulletin board material. Well, it happened on wow. the actual filing date, according to the trademark office, was July 21st, which is the day they won. Oh, okay. But that, that, they, they filed. They had to have filed that beforehand to get that filing date. So okay, okay. I, I guess if they lost, their next one would have been Bucks and Seven, right? Probably. I guess so. Well, okay. There's a little history behind the Bucks and Six phrasing. It became a rallying cry when they first made the fi- the 2013 playoffs. All right. Uh, former guard Brandon Jennings was going around yelling that before their playoff series. I'm surprised that wasn't trademarked before. Well, they got swept by the Miami Heat, so I think probably so at no that one point really, they really didn't want yeah, that right. phrase out there. <laughs> but, no uh, one really cared, I guess. Yep. But it, he, they kept doing the phrase, bucks and six, bucks and six. Uh, June 22nd, uh, Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers declared June 22nd as bucks and six day across Wisconsin. All right. Again, June 22nd. Before they won the uh, finals. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. So uh, there was a little, I guess, uh, predictions going I on guess, there. Subtle boy. prediction. Oh, oh, wow. So uh, they had a Bucks and Six Day announced before the finals even began. Or maybe during the finals, I should say. I can't remember the exact date of game one of the finals. But uh, Bucks, and, uh, Bucks and Six Day was across Wisconsin on June 22nd. And the day they won the finals this year, July 21st, Bucks and Six t-shirts were being offered on the website. 
Well, good. I mean, hey, I, I guess they're going to I guess I guess they should have no problem getting the trademark. Right. And I know they just filed. So it takes a little time to get the trademark. So yeah. they, they really shouldn't have a problem with it. No. So, and I, I don't see anybody else. Uh, uh, boy, I, that, that's pretty amazing, though. They they were really uh, precognition. Well, I, I, I guess they kind of had to do that. You know, I always say in sports. It's better to file the trademark beforehand so it protects your rights. So I guess that's what they were doing. I wonder, I, I got to take a look at the trademark office database to see if they actually filed anything regarding sweeps or five games or okay. seven games, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, no, that was a little uh, yeah. good, good foresight by the team there. Very the, confident. The other trademark I want to hit real right now deals with uh, some of the goings on with the NCAA's name, image, and identity policy, okay. the NIL. All right. Uh, Pitt football quarterback, Kenny Pickett, he filed a trademark for his personal logo. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of that from college kids nowadays. You know, they, I think they, you they, have to. Just to protect themselves. Like I said before, they, they, they're they going to protect themselves. You know, if they're going to make money off their own name and their own talents, good for them. And, you know, this is a way to protect themselves. Well, he filed his trademark. The design is his K and the number eight mashed together with the blue and gold color scheme from the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. The Big Panthers. All right. It's Decay and his number eight. K8. So so I'm assuming if he goes uh, to the pros, if he gets um, get drafted by a pro team, he's going to ask for the number eight? Probably to keep his brand alive. No, hopefully he Depending can Depending upon it. the team he goes to and who's the quarterback yeah. at the time. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting. He's try for that number eight. But again, he's a redshirt senior, and uh, everyone's pointing to the fact that Pretty pretty quickly after he filed that trademark, he already got an endorsement deal. Great. Hey. He got a deal with the Oaklander Hotel in Pittsburgh, the restaurant inside the Oaklander Hotel, the Spirits and Tables. All right. So what what's this deal entail? I guess, will they be selling his shirts? Is that what we're talking about here? It's an endorsement deal where he's endorsing the restaurant. Oh, okay. Uh, he's, yeah. he, he's kind of their spokesman. Kind yeah. Of thing. So they're, oh, okay. this, they're assuming everybody who saw this filing is assuming... He's got other deals coming. Oh, I, w- I would think so. I, I would assume everybody's sure. got deals coming. I know there's a high school quarterback looking at foregoing his senior year in high school to go go to Ohio. I wonder what the rule is, I mean, beyond sports. I mean, what's the acceptance policy of a college? I mean, can they accept someone that didn't get their high school diploma? I mean, is this kid going to do his GED so he can just I, I get into assume, college? Or how is this going to work? I'm very curious to see how this plays out. I would assume it's up to the uh, university, and then that university policy has got to be revert, reviewed by the NCAA I, before anything. It should but, be interesting. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't thought, know. I'd never heard of that before. I always you? thought you needed a, college, a, a high school diploma or a GED to get into college. I've heard of it for so, NBA, yeah. you know, for basketball players. That's when they need the GED to get into the college. Yeah. So maybe the same policy is going to apply here exit four and last but not least for this week we have a little cryptocurrency sponsor news roundup we just did a trademark roundup we're going to do some cryptocurrency roundup the cleveland cavaliers again we're starting with a basketball story in this exit sure cleveland cavaliers and socios.com have announced an official team partnership to create brand awareness through the cavaliers global asset platform now socios.com as everyone knows by now is a cryptocurrency platform yes now according to reports this is for the upcoming 2021 2022 season the logo for socios will be displayed on the abdomen section of the cavaliers practice jersey all right. Now, the way the practice jersey is set up, it's the team name, then the player's number, and then you're going to see the Socios logo below it. Okay. And this is only for practice, practice. right? These are practice logos. Okay. Uh, blockchain provider is also going to have in-venue uh, signage. I was going to ask that. I mean, I'm assuming I'm, going, I'm going to see their name when I tune into the Cleveland Cavaliers game. Exactly. Uh, you're also going to see access. You're going to see Socios in their... Um, uh, on on uh, online uh, apps and everything else. Okay. You're going to see them mentioned there. And also, in exchange for all that, the Cavaliers have given Socios rights to their marks and logos for marketing efforts, but outside the United States and Canada. Okay. So, you know, it's it's another one of the uh, cryptocurrency deals. This is the third NBA team that's, uh, that Socios has done a deal with. Wow. Okay. Cavaliers are the third. The uh, Boston Celtics. 
uh, Socios is the presenting sponsor of their website, and the Sixers. Okay. So we're seeing more and more cryptocurrency deals in the NBA now. This is number three. There's also a lot of NFT deals now for... Non-fungible tokens. Yeah. Can't have a discussion of uh, cryptocurrency without bringing in NFTs. Now. You know, it's very interesting. I just got an email. Um, you know, as lawyers, you know, we are offered, um, you, you know, you have to keep your licensed um, up to date and things like that. So we're offered classes on the new breaking laws of everything. And one of those was the law and NFTs. So uh, it's, uh, it's a big, hot topic in the law community as well. And rounding out our exit, we've got Stake.com and Watford FC, football club, another soccer team. Multi-year principal partnership starting in 2021 season. Uh, the uh, Stake.com is now the club's principal shirt sponsor as the team gets back into the Premier League. Watford was outside the Premier League for a while. Well, there's a see, I, the, the Premier League is the, the league for me. That's my most... Uh, you know, when I think of soccer, that's the league I think of. But there are so many leagues out there for soccer. Well, Watford is now back in. Oh, they're back in. All right. uh, and Stake will be running crypto-themed initiatives. Now, what does that mean? Giveaways, oh, okay. activations. All right. they're, inclu- they're doing a $10 million Doge coin or Doge coin or Dog coin, or however, <laughs> however they phrase it. D o g e c o i n. They're doing a $10 million. Doge coin. They're Doge doing coin? $10 million of those giveaway. All on right. their okay. on the international platform. All right. Uh, also, you're going to see other promotions for the team as Stake launches their UK website, which is stake.co.uk. And uh, it's kind of interesting because I saw a couple reports that this was all done in cryptocurrency. There was no actual dollars or euros involved in this. Oh, okay. So Makes it, sense. It's one of the first <laughs> ones that is doing it that way, which is very unique in the industry right now. Usually there's some combination. But congratulations to both teams, the Cavaliers and uh, Watford. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with Turnpike Sports by calling or texting us at 609-512-5910. That's 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports is the show's handle on Facebook and Twitter. At Turnpike Sports Radio is our handle on Instagram. And as always, our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to the show via Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Radio.com mobile app, as well as uh, Stitcher and YouTube. You can also watch us on your smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Head on over to turnpikesports.net. You'll be able to watch our video channel there. we got a big show coming up. Of course, we're going to have the Turnpike Sports book report, and we're going to have a Beat in the House segment. But coming up next, I'm going to be talking with Brian Pempis from usbets.com and Better Collective. We're going to go through some of the big stories in the gambling industry this week. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. The Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga returns this August 16th and 17th at the historic Saratoga Racecourse in Saratoga Springs, New York. Held in the 1863 Club at the Saratoga Racecourse, the Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga is the premier national forum for industry decision makers, advocates, and patrons to discuss and analyze gaming trends in all sectors of the industry. 14 panels, over 40 speakers, all meeting for two days to examine the critical issues facing the gaming industry and share their ideas and insights. Register today at RacingAndGamingSaratoga.com to reserve your seat. And be sure and check out the website for full agenda and conference speaker list. The Saratoga Race Course was named as one of the world's greatest sporting venues by Sports Illustrated, so don't miss out on participating in this premier event at this historic location. The Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga, this August 16th and 17th at the historic Saratoga Racecourse in Saratoga Springs, New York. Register today at racingandgamingsaratoga.com. Is your bathroom looking old and worn out? 
want to update it, but you don't know where to start? Then let BCI Bath & Shower show you how to turn that old bath into an aisle of beauty and functionality. Our residential bathroom solutions provide the best value on the market, and our customer service is second to none. Our cost-effective BCI Bath & Shower family of products has what you need. Remodeling our bathroom was a big decision for us. They didn't make a mess out of our house at all. And at the end of the day, we had a beautiful new bathroom. And it was a great experience the whole way through. We have the best monthly payment programs in the industry, with payments as low as $68 per month, or no interest, no payments for 18 months. That's right. Get the bathroom of your dreams now and pay for it in 2021. Call 1-800-308-8291 for a free no-obligation price quote. That's 1-800-308-8291. When you want quality bathroom products at a great price, it's got to be BCI Bath & Shower. That's 1-800-308-8291. With some of the best promotions and offers in the sports betting market, PointsBet simply stands out. PointsBet is the only U.S. online bookmaker to offer points betting, where every yard, every point, every goal, even every play matters. Same gay parlays, good karma payouts, early payouts, and exclusive game day promotions and guarantees for all sports. PointsBet offers more bet types than any other bookmaker in the world, offering a unique set of markets that aren't available anywhere else. And now PointsBet is offering one of the best sign-up offers in the sports betting market today. New customers signing up with code BET21 receive two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Get up to $500 back if your first fixed odds bet loses, and up to $1,500 if your first points betting bet loses. That's code BET21 for two risk-free bets up to $2,000 at PointsBet. PointsBet, it pays to be fast. Must be 21 years or older, and in New Jersey, the place of that terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six extra special bonus items that are sure to rev your engine, pique your curiosity, Mm. and even blow you away. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. Go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus the 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. That's BABE16. Because without it, no No free free stuff. stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. We are into the dog days of summer, but that doesn't mean news from the gambling world has slowed down. Some huge news has broken, especially from the world of poker. And as always, when we want to get to the latest news from the gambling industry, we turn to our returning guest who always knows what's going on from usbets.com and Better Collective. Brian Pempis is on the line with us right now. Brian, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Good morning. You know, Brian, I'm sitting here in New Jersey enjoying the World Series of Poker Online Bracelet Series, but that's not even the biggest story about the WSOP this summer. The One of the biggest stories is WSOP has gone live with their online poker site in Pennsylvania. For people in Pennsylvania who log on to the WSOP site, what can they expect to find there? Um, for right now, I mean, the traffic does seem to be a little bit muted because of what's going on elsewhere in the country with um, the states that have uh, liquidity sharing with the online bracelet series. So a little bit of a slow start, it seems like, in Pennsylvania. But, I mean, Pennsylvania is a major domino to fall for the online poker industry. Um, Pennsylvania was pretty hesitant, you know, to kind of start online poker um, with you know, coming a little bit later than online casino um, and, you know, online sports betting. But, you know, it's a huge uh, state, and once liquidity sharing with Pennsylvania, you know, kicks off between other other states that have online poker, that's a, a massive um, a massive thing to have happen. And you know, we're talking about Michigan coming online here soon as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, well, tell me about the online poker scene in Pennsylvania. Who are the platforms that are live right now in the state? Yes, we got Poker Stars, which uh, was first. Um, and, you know, they kind of had a, a jump start, a head start on the market. But, you know, with with um, there being no liquidity sharing in the state, you know, um, I don't think everyone was, you know, other other rivals to Poker Stars were, you know, really um, rushing to get into to PA. Um, as we've seen with online poker since, you know, for for um, you know many years since uh, Black Friday a decade ago, um, liquidity sharing is really necessary. So, um, Poker Stars was first, and then you know you have BetMGM Poker, and uh, now you have the World Series of Poker. So it's been a you know staggered um, kind of slow start for online poker in, in PA. But um, as you know, as liquidity sharing kind of appears on the horizon, I think you're gonna you know see a lot of activity pick up and. Uh, you know, Michigan, uh, I always, you know, compare uh, Pennsylvania to Michigan because of, um, you know, they, they began online like, poker relatively quickly, actually. You know, I'm curious, how was the rollout for WSOP in Pennsylvania? I, I am scarred for life sitting here in New Jersey witnessing the rollout of online poker and online <laughs> casinos years ago. I mean, there are, pro- there are problems with geolocation, problems with some of the banks. Were there any problems like that in Pennsylvania for the WSOP, or am, am I talking about – problems that happened a generation ago and they're all worked out now you know i'm not really sure um i have i'm not on the ground in pennsylvania i haven't um been using the sites there but um but i don't i don't, I don't believe you know a, a big issue with the traffic there has been been those kind of things um but um you know you've we've already seen that you know pennsylvania's um poker stars uh pennsylvania uh platform has been really successful or you know relatively successful um in the early going. So it, you know, it seems like people are, are able to, you know, access the sites and, and, and get their, you know, poker playing on without too much of a, a you know, a difficulty, but it really seems like the traffic, uh, the limited traffic is, is what's kind of um, preventing it from really taking off so far. Now, Pennsylvania is a huge state. I mean, how important was it for WSOP to get into Pennsylvania? I mean, was that a key for WSOP? Definitely, definitely. Although it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't something that was in any in any doubt, I would say. Um, but definitely a huge uh, state for WSOP. And, um, you know, Pennsylvania was one of the states that was uh, pretty conservative with, um, you know, its interpretation of the Wire Act, um, the federal interpretation of the Wire Act um, under, you know, over the past, like, you know, four or five years in terms of um, joining other states in liquidity sharing, Pennsylvania was very cautious. Um, you know, Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware already had liquidity sharing for for the WSOP platform. So, um, you know, Pennsylvania, when when the Wire Act, you know, sort of um, came back into the the throng of things, or you know, um, became a little bit of an issue. Pennsylvania definitely um, kind of pumped the brakes on liquidity sharing. But with with uh, a new you know administration in Washington um, and a new DOJ. Um, kind of, you know, working with that. It, 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 Pennsylvania is a is a huge uh, state for for WSOP to kind of uh, add to the mix, and and for other operators too, not just WSOP. Now you mentioned the interstate compact, which New Jersey, Nevada, and Delaware enjoys. It's a shared player pool. When does Pennsylvania have plans to join a compact? And when they do join a compact, when or if they do join the compact, what will that look like for Pennsylvania? Um, timelines for, for this kind of thing are, are, are very, um, you know, kept, uh, you know, kept out of the public sort of, um, uh, eye, so to speak, you know, by regulators They definitely, um, don't give a lot of, um, a lot of information about the, the, you know, uh, discussions and negotiations uh, behind the scenes about this kind of thing. So we're kind of, you know, regulators, if you talk to a regulator, um, you know, regulators in Pennsylvania, they'll usually say, you know, um, you know, it's definitely something on the horizon you know, something to that nature, but it's very hard to get any sort of definitive timeline um, from oper- from regulators on, on this um, issue. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's just going to be a, a massive influx in, in traffic. You know, you're going to have access to um, more cash games yeah. uh, that are running around the clock. You know, that's a, a huge thing. You know, people, online poker, you know, is, is one of those things that people fire up, you know, maybe for 30 minutes to an hour after they get off work. Um, after working like a second shift or, or whatever, you know, yeah. <laughs> playing at all hours of the day. So really having that robust cash game scene, um, traffic to, uh, f- you know, have tables, uh, relatively filled, 
uh, throughout the the course of the day is really important for for bringing people um, online. So you know, online poker really needs that 24/7 sort of cash game action. And um, you know, tournament prize pools, the bigger the better. Um, you know, they if the bigger they grow, the more you know money will be spent on advertising them too. So it's kind of like a a snowball kind of effect. And I think it's you know it's really good when when the, the prize pools can be, you know, um, larger and, and guaranteed and, uh, you know, it just brings more people on board. You know, you see big numbers like a million, you know, guaranteed prize pool, but, you know, these big, bigger numbers, you know, that we've, we were really used to, you know, used to seeing back in the heyday of online poker, right? Um, yeah, once those yeah. can kind of start to return um, under, you know, um, liquidity, share, liquidity sharing with more states, I think you'll really see the game, you know, start to grow and, and come back. I think we're 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 getting there. You know, it's interesting. I, I mentioned here in July, we're recording this in July, New Jersey has their online bracelet events for the WSOP. And uh, they announced in Pennsylvania the bracelet events will be in August. I mean, I know a lot of people who, who travel to New Jersey to play in the WSOP events. And they also told me that they're traveling to Pennsylvania to play in those events. I mean, this seemed to really work out well for the WSOP. Do you think that the WSOP will have these staggered bracelet events in the future? I mean, New Jersey Jersey one month and Pennsylvania the next month? Or do you think once Pennsylvania becomes part of an interstate compact, these online events will take place all at one time? Yeah, I think they'll all take place at one time, especially for like, you know, prestigious sort of uh, branding yeah. uh, events like a bracelet or a ring, you know, an online ring or an online bracelet. Um, I think they'll still be lo- like um, a Pennsylvania, maybe um, um, uh specific tournament i think you know having like a state champion uh, of an online poker series i think is always going to be good marketing right mm-hmm. just to, yeah. to you know say someone a player is a uh, a champion of that online poker series for that state i think is always going to be attractive um so i think you'll see that you know definitely the the big um nationally kind of uh you know ones that kind of make sense branding wise nationally uh, more nationally will will definitely be um, simultaneous, but I think, you know, you'll always have those, um, those, you know, state specific tournaments to really kind of get that going. Now, as you mentioned, WSOP.com has plans to go live in another state and that state is Michigan. What's the latest news coming out of Michigan? I mean, when, when can they expect to play on the WSOP there? Yeah. So it's been rumored for, for quite a while now, um, that it's going to come this summer and that definitely, uh, drives with, you know, what we've seen, um, you know, uh, uh, Michigan, uh, kicked off online poker relatively quickly, you know, after, uh, you know, in very short order after the other online, um, uh, g- you know, gambling options. So I think, um, you know, the WSOP doesn't want to be too far behind its competitors there, you know, the same competitors that it has in Michigan, Poker Stars and Bet MGM Poker. Um, and I think, you know, I think uh, if it doesn't come this summer, you know, it's, it's fluid, you know, with online poker launches we've seen over the years, you know, um, you can never really guarantee a launch is going to happen when it's expected. Um, but I would definitely still expect it to happen this summer in Michigan. But if it doesn't, um, you know, I'm not sure if the if the World Series of Poker would want to launch its online site in Michigan, you know, during its live, you yeah. know, flagship event in Las Vegas uh, this fall. So um, maybe that would, would delay the Michigan launch to, you know, later in the year if, if it didn't happen this summer. Um, but I, I still uh, believe it'll it'll happen this summer, and it'll probably be one of those things where it's like a an announcement that kind of comes, um, you know, it'll feel like it's coming out of the blue, but it's really not. <laughs> um, so I think you know any day you could potentially hear an announcement about um, the World Series of Poker in Michigan, and and you know hopefully that happens, uh, and you know maybe give people a chance to uh, qualify for you know live events out in Las Vegas uh, this fall. You know, you, you mentioned the live version, and uh, you, you I know you've done some reporting on the WSOP in the past, and um, I, last year's live WSOP was canceled because of COVID. What do you think the players should expect from the live WSOP this year in Vegas? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, there's been a little bit of a, you know, uh, renewed concern with, yeah. with the COVID um, variants out there. So I think you'll probably see, you know, I think when it was uh, first announced the schedule earlier this year for the fall series, you know, uh, it probably didn't really think a lot of people would be wearing a mask, but I would, I would probably guess that there'll be plenty of mask wearing there, even people who are vaccinated um, just to be safe. But I don't, I don't know if the world series of poker is going to require anything like that. I haven't heard that. And I, I doubt that. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think, um, 
it's it's hard to, it's really hard to guess what kind of turnout they'll have. I, I imagine it'll be it'll be popular, maybe not all time highs in terms of uh prize pools and participation, but you know, they have I mean they have um eighty eight events scheduled, um, right? So it's gonna be the biggest um on paper, the biggest series um they've had uh yet, right? So it's gonna yeah, be yeah. um you know, they're going all in. Uh, to use a poker term, they're definitely going all in and I think um you know it's it's definitely uh it's nice to see a poker tournament held, uh, the World Series of Poker held in Las Vegas, you know, outside of the summer months, that, you know, the dog days of summer when it's super hot in Las Vegas. So I think, you know, you might see more people want to travel there and play, you know, in September and October, um, you know, into November because of the weather. It'll be cooler. Um, that's sort of the – during football season, um, right, you'll have more people in town for, for NFL games, right, betting oh, on absolutely. NFL games Sports in California. Sports betting is going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, sports betting. So I think overlapping with NFL is going to be a really, you know, we haven't seen that. Um, I mean, I can't even recall if uh, um, way back in the day, you know, um, with the World Series of Poker overlapping with football. But, um, you know, this is definitely in the modern sort of era of online poker. You know, this is um, sort of a first, you know, seeing football and the World Series of Poker, uh, sports betting with football overlap with the World Series of Poker. So I think it'll be a It'll be a, a good thing. Uh, it'll be a really interesting thing to, to look at. Moving on to another story, but still sticking with the world of poker. Uh, you know, I'm in New Jersey now, but I have another law office located near Boston, and an issue arose where a couple of casinos in Massachusetts seem to be reluctant to bring back <laughs> poker. Um, before we take on that issue, for people around the country who are not familiar with the Massachusetts gambling scene, can you tell us something about it? I mean, it's basically three casinos, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's a relatively limited market. Um, you know, in terms of the the gambling uh, options, in terms of you know casinos. But you know that the region as a whole definitely um, has plenty of gambling options. You know, I I don't I don't live in that area. I, I don't really um, know the traffic uh, issues there that well. But I you know I know like um, you know even traveling to a casino pretty close by could be a quite a trip, right, with your car. Oh, so yeah, yeah. you know having <laughs> having those casinos, um, you know, in, in state where, uh, was a, you know, I, when I was covering those, it was always, you know, talking about in the convenience of having casinos close by. So you didn't have to travel as, as far to, to play. Um, so, you know, um, I, th- I mean, the casinos there were highly anticipated, right. There was a kind of a long process yeah, to bring yeah. them to fruition and, uh, you know, and the poker room, especially, um, you know, covering the process of, 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 the bidding and, and all that for the casino near Boston. Um, poker was always kind of a, um, a, a major kind of theme to, to that. And not just because I cover poker and, and focus on that, but it seems like, you know, generally, um, you know, broadly, you know, poker was, that poker room was very anticipated. Um, and, um, so, and, and, and the one at the one in, um, at the MGM casino, you know, less so cause it's not, you know, near, as big of a market, but in the, you know, the encore poker room definitely was, um, was a big drawing uh, factor that I, you know, that I kind of um, covered in the early days of that casino coming to fruition. Well, the issue right now really involves two casinos, the MGM Springfield and the encore Boston Harbor. What is their position when it comes to poker? When it comes to uh, live poker, live poker. Um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a, uh, I feel like we don't know everything what's being discussed behind the scenes. You know, they <laughs> talk about, um, you know, space for, for slots, you know, and, uh, but, you know, it's, it's always kind of confused. It's always kind of like, I always don't know for sure if, if you really need to, needed to, you know, put slots in a poker room um, long-term, if that's really, if that really maximizes, um, mm-hmm. you know, revenue for the gaming floor, um, you know, if you could find some other way to put the slot machines in somewhere else, but I'm not sure exactly you know what they're dealing with in terms of um social distancing still with with um through regulators but um you know it's um i you know they're they're saying a regulator uh, at the meeting earlier uh this month um said that he thought it was because of sports betting they're waiting to see what's happening with yeah. sports betting yeah. so it, i think um maybe there's some um concern that if there's no retail sports betting you know the sports betting customer and the you know, the, the poker playing customer definitely overlap yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. You know a lot of people who who do one do the other. So uh, maybe if if you know the casinos can't have a retail sports book um, anytime soon, you know poker doesn't really make as much sense, especially if 
neighboring casinos elsewhere in the region have poker and sports betting sort of, mm-hmm. you know, um, in tandem and, and maybe even in close proximity to each other, you know, on the gaming floor. Um, that's a, a big disadvantage for those casinos, for the casinos in Massachusetts. So um, I think, yeah, I think sports betting could be a, a big factor in all of this. Um, and, uh, and, I, and that's what uh, a regulator said. So, it, you know, um, they said they're waiting until the end of the year um, yeah, yeah. to decide about poker. Um, so that's sort of uh, maybe they're trying to put a little bit of, of subtle pressure on, you know, policymakers to get something done with sports betting this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be a, a thing going on. Um, you know, the regulators have been uh, apparently fielding a lot of complaints about about the poker room not reopening. And that's really picked up the summer. Um, so I think they're, you know, regulators are definitely, um, aware of it and kind of looking at it. And, uh, so it, it might, you know, send, uh, um, might have that effect in terms of, you know, um, being a part of the conversation for, for getting sports betting done. Um, cause that's a uh, poker. Yeah. Poker and sports betting go hand in hand. Yeah. I, I can tell you as a gaming attorney, poker is not the favorite topic of a lot of casino management across the country. It's a lot of people feel it takes up space. The overhead is high when you have to hire dealers and staff. I mean, I know casinos mm-hmm. want people playing the slots, which account for like 88% of a casino's revenue. I, I've never been yeah. to the MGM Springfield room, but I was at the Encore Boss room, and I know a lot of people thought it was much too big to be profitable. I mean, for people who don't know, mm-hmm. casinos use the equation that if you're going to take up so much space, you have to make the casino a certain amount of money. I mean, sometimes it gets a little more complicated than that, but that's basically the gist of it. Is a scaled-down room a possibility for these two sites? It seems like it, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess – you know, 74 tables for the Encore Boston Harbor, you know, might have been a little bit yeah. uh, bullish, maybe <laughs> maybe too bullish on, on live poker there. I mean, maybe if you have online poker in the mix in Massachusetts, then it'll make sense. You know, um, people think of, of online poker and live poker being in, you know, competition with each other, but they really go hand in hand as yeah. well. Um, you know, both both grow at the same time. You know, you have more people playing live poker if you have online poker. Um, so yeah, maybe with, you know, online poker available in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and, you know, coming to Connecticut, um, you know, maybe just a, a live poker room of that size doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, they definitely tried to make it, um, you know, state of the art, luxurious, um, you know, when, you know, when is known for having really, um, you know, well-made state of the art oh, properties, yeah. right? In Las Vegas and yep. elsewhere. It's um, absolutely, so. it's absolutely beautiful. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's absolutely a gorgeous room, the Encore Boston, but it, wow, is it huge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, they, they definitely, uh, MGM definitely, or not MGM. Um, yeah, I mean, MGM, uh, we're not, not the owner of the, uh, um, Encore casino, but you know, they, they, uh, opened up a, a really large room, you know, uh, near DC and that room seems like it's been, successful uh maybe more successful than the one uh, that opened up uh outside boston so yeah maybe it's the the market maybe you know maybe they overshot maybe there's too much competition um elsewhere you know from casinos in in connecticut um i you know i know the it seems like from what i've seen online the poker room at foxwoods is doing doing pretty well uh you know back to back to you know being um popular and, and all that so um yeah, maybe yeah, maybe seventy four tables was was too small. I mean, it's really hard to imagine it not having a poker room. Um, that would, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't have um, access to all the, you know, the numbers, the the hard the hard numbers that they've, you know, analyzed with their casino floor and its layout. But um, but yeah, you would think that there'd be at least um, some poker going on. It's, um, you know, you definitely get people in the door with poker, you know, maybe, a um, one person in the family plays slots, the other person plays poker. So if you don't have poker, maybe the person that plays slots doesn't come in, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it's, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, a smaller room would definitely, um, be the more likely option. Uh, you know, it's hard, I think with what we've seen so far, maybe, but maybe if they're sports betting, you know, maybe if they get sports betting done, they'll, they'll, um, you know, not shave off too many tables from the poker room. What has been the Massachusetts Gaming Commission's position on this issue? I mean, how how much authority do they have to compel a casino to offer poker? It doesn't seem like, um, from what I've gathered, much much um, much power. And um, you know, I guess they could publicly kind of um, you know urge a casino to to kind of really look at it hard and and, and really you know not make any sort of um, 
willy nilly decisions on it. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, for the, not that they would, but, you know, just kind of like, you know, you know, show to the public that they're, you know, listening to the complaints and the feedback. I think, you know, the regulators definitely want to seem like they're listening to, uh, you know, the feedback from the public, right. And, and, the, and customers in the state and, and all that. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if, I don't, I don't think that they can like, if they could tell Encore Boston Harbor uh, that they that they have to have their poker room, you know, it was pitched in the early um, plans, you know, um, and uh, and all that. But I think, you know, if it really doesn't make sense for the business, I think, you know, there's nothing the regulator can can do about that. I can tell you, I was talking to a lot of lawyers about this, and the legal community is looking at this situation very closely for the issue of how much power a gaming commission has uh, toward a private company. I mean, if if poker costs them profit, how will this not only affect, you know, the people of the state, but how will this affect the casino's shareholders? I mean, they have stockholders where they have a legal obligation to maximize the profit. Uh, so uh, I, do you think this issue will continue? And do you think other states are looking at this and are saying, you know what, maybe our commission has limitations on what we have to tell a casino to do. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think that's really interesting. Uh, I think maybe if you really kind of were able to determine that it was being used as a bargaining chip for, for, uh, additional legislation, like it wasn't that poker wasn't, um, feasible. Like they, they could definitely do it and it wouldn't, um, make, it wouldn't be, it would still make financial sense to have it, but it was used as a bargaining chip for maybe additional, uh, expansion of, of gambling, um, like, you know, sports, sports betting, like we've talked about, um, then maybe, yeah, maybe there's, there's, um, you know, people take another look at that. Um, because you don't want, you don't want casinos anywhere really, uh, to be, you know, withholding anything that the, they had sort of promised the public when sure. they were applying for the license, right. Yeah. Uh, to be kind of withheld as a bargaining chip for, for, you know, additional, uh, approval for, for gambling in other ways. So, yeah, I think if, if if that kind of is able to be distilled out of the equation and, and it's kind of more determined, you know, if, um, what the regulator said, you know, the, the regulator with the MGC uh, saying that it was because of sports betting, you know, maybe if, if poker is not, you know, not um, not there in the equation next year, um, you know, maybe they'll take another look at that. That's a really interesting um question you know you you raised it and a lot of people are raising it are are the casinos using sports betting as their leverage you know you know well look poker's not giving us a lot of profit but sports betting will maybe we'll bring back poker but let's see what sports betting is doing certainly the casinos can't come out and say it like that but is that what's Mm -hmm. happening right now you know it kind of it kind of feels like that in in, in this case for sure (laughs) yeah it's um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, especially in a case like Massachusetts where sports betting has stalled, right, for a while, mm-hmm. um, you know, getting the, the, getting the public engaged in, in contacting, um, you know, their policymakers, their, their local representative or the gaming commission, um, about their kind of unhappiness with kind of the state of the casino industry, right, their general sort of, uh, displeasure with, with how things are, um, can, can, you know, put pressure on people. I, I think that that can definitely be part of it. And, and I, and, you know, it, it's hard to really say for sure, but, um, that would, that would make sense. I mean, I, Massachusetts kind of, you know, the home of DraftKings, it's kind of yeah. remarkable, right. In a way that it doesn't have, um, legal sports betting yet. So I know there's, it's a complicated policy issue there, but, um, you know, it shouldn't be right. It, it's kind of, um, I would definitely have expected Massachusetts to have it, you know, earlier. So, um, you know, I guess the pandemic, you know, the pandemic situation with, um, with, po- with poker, you know, um, mm-hmm. we haven't really talked about this, but poker is a very, you know, probably the worst game in the casino, right. For, <laughs> yeah, for right. Um, playing, you know, operating during a pandemic. It so, is. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not you know, conducive I, to that. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you use the cover of COVID to, um, to kind of, uh, withhold poker to kind of put pressure on, on, you know, state officials to kind of, um, you know, kind of, really uh tackle this this gaming issue that's been lingering there you know with sports betting and and all that so yeah i think that is definitely a a really um you know very possible kind of um behind the scenes kind of back and forth going on or or dynamic 
Well, I, I want to get your opinion on something that I've talked to a lot of people about. In, in your opinion, is sports betting a real threat to the future of live poker? I mean, I've seen it in New Jersey where the Golden Nugget and Atlantic City moved their poker room to make room for their sports book. I think they moved it upstairs. I know Parks Casino in Pennsylvania opened up their sports book and moved their poker room. I Look, even on this show, casinos who were advertisers on their poker operations asked if we can switch over to their sports betting commercials. So, I mean, is there a threat? I mean, no one's really saying sports betting is taking the place of live poker. Poker, but is it cutting down a casino's option on whether to offer sports betting and live poker? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I mean, I think because because of um, online sports betting being, you know, sports betting, like the poker boom ended and now we're in a sports betting boom, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, you look at headlines, just like um, media coverage in general, sports betting versus poker, it's just uh, sports betting is way bigger, way more popular just in terms of word of mouth, online conversation, um, so I don't, you know, I think if once there's a, a, a real resurgence in poker with, with on, the online component in the mix, I think, um, sports betting is not going to give that appearance of, of kind of pushing poker to the side. Yeah. I mean, definitely that's happening now for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but it, it makes sense. I mean, they're both very similar amenities, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and I think, um, you know, in this, in this quest to, you know, acquire new customers for sports betting, you know, it's like, you know, had a choice between a, a, a person, you know, um, you know, sports betting or playing poker, you know, maybe, maybe they spent a little bit less on sports betting, but, you know, there's more, um, you know, more to be gained by, you know, that customer um, through sports betting, right. With, with yeah. the, the popularity of it, the online uh, uh, part of it in the mix too. Um so I think, yeah, I think sports betting is definitely, um, sh- you know, definitely pushing poker to the side right now. But I think that's really because of the online component that you that you don't really probably, you know, feel really is going on when you're, you know, at the casino seeing these things, you know, these changes. But I think the online situation is a, is a big part of it. Do you think the situation that's happening in Massachusetts could affect decisions around the country. Do you think a lot of casinos are looking at this and saying, you know what, poker's not really bringing in enough money for how much room it takes up in our casino. So let's see how Massachusetts deals with it, and then we can decide on our own what we can do with live poker. Do you think other states are looking at Massachusetts as a guide in this situation? Mm, That's a good question. Um, yeah, perhaps. I mean, I know like there definitely are other states with with poker rooms that are still closed. I believe there's a couple poker rooms in, in uh, West Virginia that are still closed. You know, they have sports betting down there as well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, I mean, Boston is a is a big city, right? So if if another state doesn't really have a casino, um, maybe if their casinos aren't you know confined, I guess to like you know the bigger cities, maybe that's a different dynamic where. Mm-hmm it's not as um, good of a, of a comparison or kind of a good um, as good of a model to kind of look at with what's going on in Massachusetts. But I think that's definitely true to some extent as well. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely, like I was saying before, I think I wrote in my article about this, like poker across the country, you know, there are poker rooms that haven't reopened, but Massachusetts definitely um, has the most high profile situation going on because of, of how popular those rooms were kind of billed as right uh, we're kind of expected to be, yeah. and 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 definitely the 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 public sort of uh, backlash to those rooms not reopening. So I think, I think yeah, I think it could be uh, a little bit of an industry sort of um, the industry sort of looking at that um, situation probably as a maybe as a bit of a guide. But as we were you know talking about, it could be um, maybe more unique though with the sports betting you know issue going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Maybe it's not as as relevant for for other states that have, you know, online sports betting and, and all that going on already. For Massachusetts, give us a time frame when you think this issue will be decided. Um, I'm going to be optimistic and say this year, but, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> I, would, I mean, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like some states will seem like they're dormant and then, you know, all of a sudden the ball, the ball will, you know, get rolling real fast. I mean, Ohio yeah. sort of like that too, where it's like, um, you know, it's been kind of teased and teased and teased. And then maybe just all of a sudden this fall, you know, when they start working on it again, it'll, it'll just, you know, pass and that'll, that'll be, that'll be it. And the ball will be, uh, you know, the ball will be rolling. Um, so yeah, I, w- I would say, um, this year or, or next year, I hate to, um, 
be bad at handicapping, uh, you know, this kind of thing. But I think, uh, you know, and maybe maybe we'll look back and, you know, say this poker situation, the, the poker live poker um, situation in, in Massachusetts was really kind of a good thing to kind of, you know, push the uh, the policy uh, change. So maybe, you know, maybe maybe it'll it'll all work out in the end. Maybe by January we'll be really happy with everything. And speaking of sports betting, a huge sporting event is coming up, and that's the Olympics. That's something I've never bet on, but according to the American Gaming Association, a lot of people will be betting on it. Uh, what, a report just came out from the AGA revealing a very interesting things about betting on the Olympics. What did that report reveal? I think the the, the headline number was uh, 20.1 uh, million people will bet on the Olympics, which um, yeah, it's a, that's a, seems like a good number. You know, mm-hmm. the Olympics are, are kind of a, a fringe a betting activity, right? Um, even Las Vegas had a lot of, um, sort of restrictions on it, it was sort of, uh, kind of flirting with it, not really all in on Olympic betting, you know, before, um, before 2018, before the, you know, the, the big uh, Supreme Court ruling that opened up the floodgates for other states legalizing sports betting. So Nevada was always sort of like, not super into it. It wasn't like a ever a big money maker out there either. Um, and uh, but you know, twenty point one million people definitely kind of shows that it's uh, on the minds of people. Um, you know, the the AGA said that forty seven point four million people were betting on March Madness earlier this year. So you know, the Olympics are about or you know less than half of that. Which um, you know. You would think maybe, you know, um, a world, you know, a, a, an event that happens every four years that involves athletes all over the world with so many events would would have more handle relative to March Madness. But, um, you know, March Madness is a, is a powerhouse sort of sporting event. So um, I think, you know, 20.1 20, 20. million people betting on the Olympics compared to nearly 50 million for March Madness. Definitely, I think it seems like, you know, like a – a number you would kind of expect. Um, and that's, you know, that's a good amount. I think the, what I really found interesting from that survey was the AJ found that uh, nearly half of people are going to be betting casually with their friends, which um, kind of reduces the, the, uh, you know, the appeal of that 20.1 million bettors, right. That then includes a lot of people mm-hmm. that are not going to be betting through a, a regulated book, um, you know, betting with their friends at a bar on a, <laughs> on a game or a track race, you know, um, and uh, I think that, I mean, that, that, that really sort of um, highlights this, um, these efforts by, you know, DraftKings, uh, WinBet, uh, other companies to really try to capture that peer-to-peer wagering dynamic, right? Like a social peer-to-peer wagering um, interest out there. You know, if half the people are going to be betting with, betting with a friend rather than uh, opening up a, an app to bet um, on the Olympics, I think that, that shows the, uh, the innovation uh, another another evidence, another piece of evidence showing the innovation that's probably going to be coming with trying to make sports betting online, you know, more social, so to speak. We don't have a lot of time, but I certainly want to ask you about a very sad story coming out of the poker world. Six-time WSOP bracelet winner Lane Flack has passed away at age 52. Now, you've done a lot of reporting in the poker industry. Can you tell us a little bit about Lane and what his passing means to the poker world? Yeah, so Lane was a... Um, you know, six bracelets in your career, um, that puts them near the top of the all time, um, leaderboard. I mean, bracelets are still the most prestigious prize in poker, even though we're, you know, ways out from the, the poker boom of uh, roughly a decade ago, a little bit more than a decade ago, you know, um, his bracelet tally that he accumulated, um, was, you know, will be impressive for quite a while until, you know, he you know, keeps falling down the, the list. Um, but that won't be happening anytime soon because, you know, bracelets are pretty hard to win. So mm-hmm. his, um, his six bracelets are going to, you know, keep him as a, a poker, you know, legend, uh, for, for a long time. I mean, I think he'll, he'll always remain like a, uh, kind of an OG, uh, type player. You know, he, he was probably at his peak in the, in the late nineties. And when, and when he won back to back bracelets in, in 2002, um, you know, he was regarded as a really top player in the late nineties. And I guess that sort of, um, he sort of, um, fell off that a little bit, you know, during the early part of the poker boom from, you know, tw- uh, 2003 to, you know, 2007, so to speak. And, uh, but then he won a, um, a big bracelet in 2018 for nearly $600,000. He won a, 
a PLO event a, um, with a lot of players. You know, poker, the tournaments had exploded by then in, in terms of um, uh, prize pools and, 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 um, and turnout. So when he won that uh, PLO event in, in 2008, uh, that, you know, proves that he was still a very relevant, dominant, you know, skilled player. And I mean, but even up until just um, a couple of years ago, he was still, you know, cashing in events um, in 2019 at the World Series, you know, the year before uh, COVID, uh, he finished uh, 20th out of nearly 6,000 entries in the 1K seniors event. So, I mean, he still had it. He still had, po- you know, had his game, um, you know, that a deep run in that, that kind of tournament of that size is very impressive. Um, so he, you know, he still was uh, a very skilled poker player up until the end. Um, he finished uh, 140th on the U S all time money list. Um, at one point he was 25th on the all time money list, uh, you know, years ago before um, tournament prize, tournament prize pools really exploded. Um, so, I mean, that, at his at his peak, at his the top of his game, he was definitely um, one of the best players in the world, at least for tournaments. Um, but I would say, like the the stylistic part of his game that really is uh, memorable is how kind of quickly he played. He was a very fast player, uh, you know, very talkative, very friendly, and he would play very fast. And um, Eric Lindgren, another poker player, another well known poker player, tweeted the other day after Lane uh, passed away that uh, Lane didn't just win WSOP events. He took pride in having the winter photo taken before sun went down. <laughs> so uh, he definitely uh, was trying to get out of there quick. You know, he didn't want to <laughs> linger and, and, and grind it out. Right. Um, so he was uh, a, a fast, um, you know, talkative player. And I, I think uh, he'll be remembered for that. It was, it was one, one sad thing about um, another sad thing about this whole story is that uh he uh, in April he tweeted um, Wayne Flack tweeted that um, he was sad that his old friend uh, Gavin Smith who passed away a couple years ago mm-hmm. another uh, well-known poker player uh, during the, the poker boom years um, had passed away and, and 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 Gavin wouldn't be at the World Series of Poker this fall with Wayne wow. and uh, you know Wayne ended up passing away too before the the series um, rolled around this fall so. Definitely an unexpected death, um, and uh, he'll definitely be definitely be missed. Um, so, but his his bracelet tally, like I said, will be will be hard. You know, it's hard to win a bracelet, and having six of them six of them will definitely keep him. You know, um, kind of a a big name in poker for for a long time. I would say. Absolutely, uh, Brian. We're running out of time, but can you give out your website or your social media address so people can keep up to what you're doing and check out your articles? Sure. So I, I write for uh, usbets.com uh, primarily, uh, and my handle is uh, at Brian Pempis on Twitter. Brian Pempis from usbets.com and Better Collective. Thanks so much for coming back on and giving us an update about what's going on in the gambling world. You always give us some great information, so please come back soon and keep us filled in on the gambling industry. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. During these difficult times, we understand how important it is to stay healthy and safe. With so many of us confined to our homes and not being able to work, we feel the financial burden more than ever. Many folks lost their jobs and businesses. Others were furloughed and some are working from home at reduced pay. Keeping up with your bills is not easy under these circumstances. If you have credit card debt and cannot keep up with your monthly payments, we at Debt Fix Pros are here to help. Give us a call to see how we can reduce your interest rates and lower your monthly payments. Protect your credit and let us help you find a solution that fits your needs. We, your friends at Debt Fix Pros, are here to help. Let us take care of your credit card debt so you can focus on what is really important. Call for a free phone consultation at 800-919-6011. 800-919-6011. That's 800-919-6011. 800-919-6011. United we stand. Are you paying too much for your health insurance? Are your deductibles too high? Or are you completely uninsured? 
If you answered yes to any of these questions, Healthcare Help Desk can help you now when people need help the most. Health insurance laws and rules have changed. If you have Obamacare, are uninsured, or your premiums are too high, call Healthcare Help Desk. It's free. New health care plans are available, and you may qualify for dental coverage and lower copays and deductibles. Make the free call now. Top quality coverage at the lowest prices anywhere. You may be paying too much and not even know it. In these troubled times, health care is more important than ever. Don't let another day go by without health insurance. Policies are being offered with very low copays and deductibles. So if you're uninsured, underinsured, or paying too much, call Health Care Help Desk. 800-329-7906. It's a casino. People got to win sometimes. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'm a giant, colorful check to deposit. Beating the House is brought to you by BetMGM Casino. Play your favorite casino games at BetMGM Online Casino. Slots, table games, live dealer games, everything you love about Atlantic City and Vegas, all online at BetMGM. Don't wait. Join in the fun now. Go to BetMGM Casino, create an account using our promo code TURNPIKE, and become a verified player. New players get $25 free when signing up, plus a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code TURNPIKE at BetMGM.com for a 100% deposit match up to $1,000 plus $25 free. Grab a lion's share of the fun at BetMGM.com. Must be 21 years or older to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to another edition of Beating the House, where we actually celebrate the winners of the slots, the table games, the whatever other game you offer in a casino. If somebody's won it, we're going to talk about it. I think it's great when people actually take money away from the casino, and uh, this is their uh, time to shine. So, uh, well, you lo- know, I love this segment. One love of it. the things I've, I've been noticing about since we started this segment, I've been learning so many different types of casino games out there. And not just in terms of what table games are out there, but also the different types of slot machines. That, that's my thing, man. When you uh, tell me when someone hits on a slot, I, I actually write down the slot machine because, number one, when I'm in the casino, I'm going to look for it. Number two, when I'm online and uh, checking out the different um, checking out the different online slots, I, um, I try and take a look for these things. You know, i got to start incorporating that a little bit more into this segment in terms of getting the online casino jackpots. We don't, ha- we don't talk about too many of them because there's a lot of actual brick-and-mortar casino jackpots that are happening sure, now. Sure. And uh, this week's no difference. You know, a lot of casinos uh, Facebook their uh, things. You know, you have, I, I saw one uh, yesterday. Someone was holding the big check, you know. Well, everyone loves that big check. Love the big check. Well, you they know, get to keep that, right? They get. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, what, I would do, what do you do with it? Is on it? I mean, what do they do with it? I mean, can you? I I guess you can frame anything. Can I wonder how much it costs to frame those? Do things. you take it to a big bank and cash? Yeah, it? I, yeah. Okay. I don't know, but right. uh, no, their names are always on it. Yeah, it yeah, has, yeah, actually, some of them have actually the name of the game that you want it on. And all oh, really? That. So, okay. uh, so maybe it's a souvenir that that they get, and you know, when they do the get these jackpots, but. Uh, this week we've got a couple to talk about. We've got two slots, two slot jackpots, a bad beat jackpot, okay, a table game jackpot, and our first Kino jackpot. Kino, all right. Now the only thing I know really about Kino is it's something to play when I'm waiting for my beer at the bar. Up, you know, when I go up into Massachusetts, Massachusetts is fun in terms of Kino. Kino is everywhere up there. Kino is in uh, restaurants and bars yep. up in Massachusetts. It's also in the uh, mall. Sure. Yeah. No. People actually play Kino in the mall. They get they buy their Kino tickets, walk around, go shopping, come back and check if they won. There's there's actually one mall that I don't know if they still have it or not, but they used to have the Kino system in the middle of the mall at a kiosk, and then they had couches sitting around all the TV showing the different Kino games. Really? Okay. So mm-hmm. it was actually almost like a little mini Kino casino inside <laughs> yeah, right. a actual mall. Uh, and I'm not talking about an outdoor mall. I'm talking about an indoor mall. Just like, uh, you know, you grew up on in the 80s. But we're going off the tangent here again. So uh, yeah, let's, we, want, uh, let's we went off the talk- rails on that one. Let's start talking about uh, what the uh, winners are here. We got, we're got we going first to French Lick, Indiana. Ah, the hometown of Larry Bird. Well, French Lick, Indiana is also the home to French Lick Casino. 
and French Lick Casino just experienced a winning jackpot of almost seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. Six hundred ninety thousand six hundred twenty-three dollars was won this past Sunday night to a local resident. Uh, it wasn't a visitor from out of town. It was a Southern Indiana resident. You always love to see the regulars win, so that's always great. It was a French Lick Rewards card holder, so they had been to the casino many times. They're a regular there. Uh, they won the progressive jackpot by playing the Dean Martin's Wild Party slot machine. I think I've seen that in casinos. I've seen it in a few casinos. I've never played it. I guess now I got to try it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm going to sit down at it next time I see it. Six hundred ninety thousand dollars on a one dollar bet. One dollar bet. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, this was the largest payout by far in French Lick Casino's sixteen year history. All right. The previous jackpot was two hundred sixty five thousand, which is about half of what the person won. Boy, that jackpot blew by that uh, the previous record. That was two. That was, was even a, close. That was in two thousand thirteen. So it's been nine years, uh, eight years since the last uh, big jackpot at that casino. I want, what do you do after that? I mean, you just... I go home. Oh, my God. It's just one of those things where you, you want, just want a huge jackpot. You, you just, on one dollar bet, I mean, what do you do? You go have dinner, drinks? Do the uh, Does the casino do anything for you? I mean, other than give you the $690,000. And the do press. They, and the press. And do, I mean, do they give you a burger and a drink or champagne or what happens i you know i've never won a jackpot so i i don't know exactly <laughs> what happens if once i win i will tell you about that but uh the previous wild party jackpot was two hundred fifty six thousand. yeah so uh the the uh good luck congratulations seven hundred thousand dollar winner yeah wow dean martin's wild party slot machine okay i've got to write that down so uh, i'm going to check that out Moving over to Southern California at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. A Morongo slots player won $371,000 uh, after, after doing a $1.50 bet. Wow, boy. Now, we had a story last week about a guy who was at the uh, one of the New York casinos, and he had a stranger come up and say, play the slot machine, oh, yeah. guardian angel kind of deal. Okay, yeah. This one is actually another feel-good story here. This was a uh, cancer survivor. Great. Okay, just, great. I, I'm, I'm glad he won the jackpot. He just received his notice from the doctor that he was cancer-free, or all clear was what he said in the press release. After several months of chemotherapy, the guy's son asked him where he wanted to celebrate, and he said he wanted to go to Morongo. Wow, that's great. What a great story. He, he started to play. Good for him. All around good day for him, huh? He was playing the Wheel of Fortune slot. That's oh, that a, that, that one always pays out. That, yeah, but there's a lot of great stories about the Wheel of Fortune slot. So well, uh, he played it for ten minutes, and he won three hundred seventy-one thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars off a dollar fifty bet. Great, good for I, him. I'll be honest with you, Wheel of Fortune. I think almost every week we've had a Wheel, Wheel of Fortune slot story. You know the other uh, w there's Wheel of Fortune online, but the other good one online is Divine Fortune. Well, that, that, that's, that's a progressive too. That's that's always a great money maker for people. Well, you got to remember every single one of these slot machines, whether they're retail or online, there are always different versions of it. Yeah. And the Wheel of Fortune Progressive, this was in the brick and mortar, and there are also about maybe four or five variations online of the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, that, game. That's why I was going to say there's about four or five Wheel of Fortune like different games you can play. I guess I got to try Wheel of Fortune now too. I haven't played it in a while, so I got to try it. Going over to table games, we're over in the Orleans in Vegas. Uh, a local player won $119,663 at a progressive jackpot at face-up pie gal poker. There's too many variations of these uh, poker games, you know, like three-card poker, Caribbean poker, pie gal poker. I don't play any of them. I, I, don't, I don't understand them. I'm, I'm sure they're easy games to figure out. I just don't take the time to go up there and do them. Well, the uh, I, I've never heard of Face Up Pie Gal Poker. That must be a brand new who variation. Knows? But the uh, player who has requested to remain anonymous hit a seven-card straight flush with a joker. Okay. Now, I guess Pie Gal is one of those few games that actually utilize the joker. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's why I don't play Pie Gal. 
I've if never the Joker's Pi involved, Gal. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I actually got to try Pi Gal because it looks, it looks complicated, but it also looks fun. I have a ton of books on different gambling games. I'm sure Pi Gal Poker is in there. I'll, I'll read up on it. And to top it all off, not only did he win just under 120000 he also played the Dragon Bonus side bet, and he won $5,000 more. See, I don't even know what the hell that means. It well, sounds like a great thing to do, but I just don't know what it means. I, see, I really got to read up on this stuff. There's so many different side Gal bets. Side, and vari- and yeah. Not only is it there variations in the games, there's variation in the side bets, too. And I think every casino has different ones. So, uh, you know, this guy, uh, 125000 overall. That was a good night. Uh, let's do the Bad Beat Jackpot for the week here. All right. Going over to the Santa Fe Stations Casino. Now, Stations Casino always has a great bad beat jackpot system. I was one of the last uh, hotels I stayed in in Vegas. I can't. I, I can't remember we where were, exactly was. That was the Stations Casino. Stations Casino. That was the main one. That was the main one. All right. This is the Santa Fe Station in Northwest Vegas. All right. Uh, the the uh, Stations Casino's Jumbo Hold'em Poker Bad Beat Progressive. They hit on July 21st. Total payout to players was $225,571. Okay. Losing hand was Quad Jacks. That's the one who won the bad beat jackpot. The winning hand was a jack high straight flush. So the winning hand, which is technically the loser in the bad beat jackpot, beat the uh, four jacks with a jack high straight flush. Uh, the winning hand won $22,552. That's the jack high straight flush. Okay. The losing hand, which is actually the winning hand in the bad beat jackpots here, won $33,827. Now, again, the total payout to all the players was 225000 Why is it so high? Well, all the players at the table won $1,400 each at that specific table. Okay. All poker guests across all the stations, casino, poker rooms won money. So you can be at a different location in a stations casino, and because this guy won the as bad beat. As long as you're in a long, stations casino and when the bad beat progressive jackpot hits. So you don't even have to be in the same casino to win no. some money. All right. $1,100 each. Everybody playing poker at that time. Wow. In any stations casino poker room, they won $1,100. How was that announced? I would love to hear that. I mean, you're sitting in the poker it's room and be it's over the, the loudspeaker. I guess so. You know, is it like everyone remain in your seat because we have to tell you you got a uh, eleven hundred bucks? Well, I, I guess they stopped playing. I, I have no idea. Well, congratulations to everybody at the Santa Fe Casino and everybody at playing at the Stations Casino. Is that yeah, right. So, uh, and last but not least, like I said, we have a Kino jackpot to talk about. A Kino jackpot. A 10-spot Kino jackpot was won when a local player at the Boulder Station Casino uh, won $63,820 on a 20-cent wager. Boy, what a big week for station casinos, huh? It's amazing the way <laughs> the, the different the different winning, uh, different games people win at these uh, casinos. And stations are all over the place in terms of Nevada. So so this guy in Kino, uh, he won over $63,000 on a twenty cent bet, is that what I'm saying here? A twenty cent bet, a twenty cent, twenty cent bet on a ten spot. Okay, you know you pick ten numbers. Yeah, I, I got that part. Yeah. So, wow, uh, jeez. Now I I don't know where I I guess because Kino is only in casinos in Nevada too, or is that everywhere? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, could I, I can, he, I, did he have to be inside the casino itself instead of just in the property? I mean, I, I can tell you in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, you, you can't play casinos. You Most know, states are you can, like that. You can't play Kino outside of a gaming floor, outside of a casino. But a lot I mean, of states are like that. Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, but congratulations to all our winners this week. Uh, casinos, uh, sports books, uh, online or retail. If you have any uh, news about jackpots for your players, let us know. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com, and we will include them in an upcoming episode of Beating the House. The book report's next, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Sometimes life is wonderful. 
and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready, and health insurance is your financial safety net. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is 35000 or more, give us a call at 800-231-9279. That's 800-231-9279. 800-231-9279. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available, and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-217-1797. 800-217-1797. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-217-1797. 800-217-1797. 800-217-1797. Having a rough morning after a long night out? That's why there's morning recovery. Morning Recovery is the flagship product of More Labs, and it's scientifically engineered to outsmart rough mornings. Use promo code RADIO15 at morelabs.com and get 15% off of your first purchase of Morning Recovery or any of their other great products. That's RADIO15 at morelabs.com to take advantage of this great promo of 15% off of your first purchase. Morning Recovery from More Labs, so you can work hard, play hard, and live life without compromise. Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more, and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to another edition of the Book Report, where we go through the news and notes from the sports books around the country. Now, it could be uh, sports betting numbers in terms of revenue and handle, news with regards to legislation, launches, deals, and we've got a whole bunch of things to run down this week. Uh, we got some state and national numbers to talk about. We've got a couple launches, especially one very interesting one in Washington, D.C. Uh, we've got legislation, Massachusetts, Arizona, Oregon, uh, and even a bunch of deals. We have a deal that involves Tipico for the first time. Yeah, they're, they're in New Jersey, but they're, they're one of those sports books you don't hear a lot about. Well, they're a German sports book, so uh, they just did a major deal. But before we get to some of the deals, let's hit some of the numbers. Okay. Uh, we had Nevada, Rhode Island, Colorado, and Tennessee for this week report their numbers. Uh, in terms of handle, three states went up, one state went down. Okay. Uh, we're going to hit, let's go to Nevada first. They had a June handle of $545 million. That's up 14% from May. Online handle of $314 million, which was up about 5.5%. Or 57.6% of the total handle. Okay. Uh, The interesting number about the uh, percentage of the online handle is the fact that May was 62.4% in terms of online, of the percentage of online handle to the the total handle. And then 57 point, and then 64.8 in uh, April. So they're having slowly decreasing 
uh, online handle numbers. Well, more and more people are going to the actual physical sports books. You know, it's a uh, it's certainly a uh, summertime and vacation destination in Las Vegas. So you know, they're they're having that go. Th- <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's affecting the numbers. Well, I think you also got to look at you know. I think McCarran uh, International Airport reported a huge increase in the tourist numbers. Yeah, the no, flight that, numbers coming in passengers. Certainly, that's what's going on, and uh, you know, it's it's open and it's people. Are going back into the uh, casinos and sports books. I, I think they have a mask mandate now for people inside, so I guess you got to yeah. mask up again. So, uh, but still, people are in there, and people, uh, you know, are traveling from around the country. Usually, it's from places that don't have sports betting, and you know, they're trying their hand at sports betting in the sports books. Yep. Uh, and also, this is the 18th time in the post PASPA era that Nevada has cleared 500 million dollars in monthly handle. Great. The most of any state. New Jersey is second with 14 times. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, the twentieth time Nevada cleared twenty five million dollars in revenue. They had a revenue in June of twenty nine point two million. So it's the twentieth time they've cleared twenty five million in revenue. Most of any state as well. Jersey's right there with them at eighteen. Okay. So it's always Nevada, New Jersey, one two, okay. or whichever way you want to look at it, monthly, yearly, however. It's always those two states now. Uh, Rhode Island, uh, the interesting thing here, the fiscal year numbers that they released as well as their June numbers, uh, they had a total handle of fiscal year 20, 2020 to 2021 of just under $353 million. That's up 76% from the previous fiscal year. That's COVID numbers. Sure. Uh, you're sure. comparing Absolutely. It, it should be up. So. Online handle was up uh, 270%. Okay. Uh, 184 million this this fiscal year compared to fiscal year 2019-20, which was 49.8 million. You got to remember something about Rhode Island and also about New Hampshire. Uh, they're really the only states in New England that uh, that have sports betting. So, you know, if people are in Massachusetts and they want to place a bet on something, they either have to go to Rhode Island or they have to go to New Hampshire and um uh, you know, I don't think Maine is going to have sports betting anytime soon. Maine shelved it. Yeah, I don't think Vermont is even looking at it. You're going you're to have Connecticut coming up with sports betting. Well, so we'll talk about Connecticut in a little bit. It would be very interesting to see the numbers with regard to Rhode Island as um, as Connecticut goes online. And we'll see what happens in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, Colorado. Uh, Colorado is famous be, is becoming a famous destination for table tennis betting. Yes, if you like table tennis, you want to get to uh, Colorado to place a bet on it. But is it still number uh, six? I know it was number six last month. The number six sport bet on. Well, it held on to that spot. Okay, all six right. is the six top sport. If you want to look at it, and depends on how you report these numbers, because if you're reporting categories, parlays were higher than than uh, table tennis. Uh, the, if the top the top five categories basketball seventy four point eight million in handle baseball fifty four and a half here's where parlays come in parlays were third with thirty three point nine million I don't consider that a sport no, so no. you know it's uh, the top five basketball baseball then you have soccer and tennis and then uh, hockey was sixth as in terms of listings but soccer tennis and hockey rounded up the top five sports okay hockey had ten point seven million. Table tennis was six with eight point six seven eight million. Okay, they were three point eight percent of the total handle of the June numbers for Colorado. Uh, also, one of the more interesting uh, things regarding Colorado compared to the the mixed uh, markets out there between that have retail and online, they have the highest percentage of bets placed on mobile. Ninety, I think it was ninety eight point eight percent of the total handle was done mobile. In wow, Colorado. this is Colorado, huh? That's wow. Colorado. Wow, boy. Very, very unique situation there. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of the uh, hotels have started just reopening and everything. So I think you're going to see maybe a little bit of decline. I don't I don't know if a total decline, but 98.8%, that's almost nearly 100%. That's almost like an online-only uh, market. Well, look, I mean, there's nothing like betting online and uh, in your home, laying down on your couch with either your tablet or your cell phone in your hand and watching a game and throwing a bet on it and not even getting up off the couch. Well, that's, that's a that's a great thing. Speaking of online only markets. Yes. Tennessee. Uh, they're they're averaging still around 170 million in handle every month. Uh, this is the uh, first double digit hold 
since launching last November. They had a hold of 10.49%. They hit that legislative hold number. Okay. First time since they, they did that in, in November of 2020. Yeah, by law, they're supposed to have, what, 10% hold? 10% or more. And uh, when they don't hit that 10%, there's some kind of um, um, economic adjustment the books have to do <laughs> okay, with know. their uh, with their numbers. You know, they they have, think they have, like, another period to actually get above the 10% right. or they get a penalty. Well, this time they actually achieved it with yeah. 10.49%. Like I said, first double-digit hold since launching last November. Tennessee also became the ninth state with legalized sports betting to clear $1 billion in handle in the 2021 calendar year. So between January and June, they cleared $1 billion in handle. Wow, that's, uh, that's only six months. That's only half a year. But that's nine states, though. Yeah. That, that's an incredible number to yeah. look at there. And so if there's any state debating whether to allow sports betting, you can see these numbers coming in, and it'll, it, sports betting does wonders for your state. One other little news and note here from Tennessee. Tennessee's average bet per citizen was $161.27. I mean... That's per, per person per person in the state of Tennessee. I mean, for... That's not assuming everybody bet. Well, that's not one bet, though. That's That's the average... Of per uh, per citizen wagered in the month. Okay, All yeah, right. that's how it broke down, uh, and it's slightly higher than Virginia. They're the other online only state, one hundred fifty five dollar forty seven cents. So Tennessee was slightly above them in terms of the first six months of the year. Okay, so kind of kind of a little interesting numbers there. Now we just had just about everybody report their uh, sports betting handle and revenue numbers for the month of June. Everybody except. Illinois right now. Illinois is always behind. Yeah, it's, so. it's always 60 to 90 days behind. Yep. Uh, without Illinois, the June national state revenue tax is at $41.3 million, $34 million. That's the most tax collected, is the sixth highest tax collected in the post-PASPA era. Okay. So, uh, so this is national. This is how much taxes was collected from sports betting. The U.S. sports much betting industry get. has generated okay. uh, taxes of $41.34 million. That's without Illinois reporting. And, uh, you know, we'll see exactly what Illinois brings in in terms of taxes. I, I well, think ag- what they shoot for always is seeing if they get to $50 million. Ag- That's always yeah. well, the record. Ag- again, Illinois. like I said, if there's any state wondering if uh, they could benefit from sports betting, you see those tax revenue numbers and uh, – your state will certainly uh, profit from sports betting. Well, let's talk a little bit about these states coming up here, Connecticut. Uh, there was a report out there that uh, FanDuel and DraftKings may not be able to launch at the start of football season. Really? Oh, boy. Uh, it, it all has to do with the compact. Okay. This is the compact between the Native American tribe and the state of Connecticut. The, the Mohegan tribe and the Mashantanket Pequot tribe. They, had, they did their deals with FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, the Department of Interior just received the compacts. So they have a 45-day window to review the compacts and approve them. They so, can do it quicker than that. I mean, but, so they're not going to rush through it. I no. mean, if, if you're looking at red tape, I guess you're... I guess you're not really banking on them starting by the NFL season, but who knows? I mean, maybe they have a Department of Interior has a free afternoon that they can take a look at the compacts and approve it. So, well, the 45 day window let's hope. the 45 day window ends September 10th. All right, first day of NFL season is September 9th. Ooh, okay. So there's a chance they can still get it launched, but the problem is once they're approved, you know the uh, the uh, compact is not officially recognized until it's published in the federal registrar but can they start betting before they're placed in the federal oh okay no see that's the problem and also it all it all really depends on when they're published in the federal registrar because it could take several days up to a week after the uh, department of interior approves the compact well maybe they'll get it done in august and they'll put it in the federal registrar by late August and, uh, you know, betting will occur because I, I know there's some, uh, temporary things that they're setting up, especially in Mohegan sun. Right. I think I did a news story. They're on that planning on a temporary book in September. Yeah. You know. And then a, uh, a permanent book later on in the year and possibly in the, the winter and early next year. Well, whether or not they're going to be able to take bets is going to be an interesting issue. 
uh, as opposed to two states that are moving very fast, Arizona. Arizona released their approved sports betting rules, and they also have now a timeline that they're going to be following. Uh, Qualified applicants can apply August 16th. Uh, Marketing account creation and app downloads are allowed to begin August 28th. Wow. Sportsbook set to launch September 9th, which is the first day of the NFL season. Wow. They they know what they're doing. Yep. They're moving right (laughs) along. They... They've gotten uh, they've gotten uh, sportsbook deals already announced between DraftKings, FanDuel, Barstool, WinBet, PointsBet, Unibet, BallyBet, Caesars, all have sportsbook deals in the state already. That's going to be a huge market. It's going to be a Our, fun market. To Arizona watch. is going to be a great sports betting market. And they also confirmed that daily fantasy operators can launch on August twenty eighth. Wow, look at that! So they are going full. Board. What a fall Arizona yeah. is going to have. That's going to be a fun state to watch, especially during the football season, to see exactly uh, where they go with all this stuff. Um, as opposed to Massachusetts, Massachusetts doesn't even have poker. No. <laughs> they don't even have legal poker. The they two push of the, that off. They push I mean, that if off. you listen to the uh, interview with Brian Pempis, you can uh, see that the two casinos that were offering poker have not opened up their poker operations yet or reopened up their poker operations yet. So, uh, And I guess they're going to make a decision at the end of the year. So well, stay Senate, tuned for no, Massachusetts. No, Massachusetts Senate in terms of sports betting. Oh, well, I, I'm talking about poker. Poker, poker. At the end of the year, they'll make their decision at the end of the year. Now, now on you to hope, sports betting. You hope, you hope poker is at the end of the year. Well, who knows? But uh, now you're, you moved on to sports betting. Yeah. What's Massachusetts doing well, with we, sports betting? Well, they just had the House pass the sports betting bill. I think the number I got in my notes, 156 to 3. The House passed the sports betting bill. Now, when you... The, the next step is the Senate, and the Senate's always been the problem for sports betting in Massachusetts. I don't even think it's on the schedule for the Senate to even They talk have about. not even decided when they're going to take up the sports okay. betting bill. Well. They haven't even decided what sports betting bill they're going to discuss because there's two of them. There's the House bill, which is actually a great sports betting plan, and then you have the Senate bill. Senate Bill 269, it's a very interesting bill because it does a lot of limiting and uh, that's what laws do. Yeah, uh, it, it sets a cap to six online licenses, as opposed to the untethered one in the House bill. And uh, the other thing I noticed, which was really really odd, they want to license the data firms. That's they want the- to require they want to require official data be used in this by the sports books, but the data firms have to be licensed by the state. That's the proposed Senate bill, but the one that passed in the House, they don't have that provision, No, they don't right? have that at all. Okay. And also the Senate bill restricts— House bill is very good. I like the House bill. The Senate bill prohibits college betting. That's that's weird. That's that, interesting. That's a total— so That's total restriction. Kind of ridiculous. Uh, one other little news and notes legislation-wise, I guess this falls under legislation-wise, Oregon. Uh, as everyone knows, the Oregon sports betting industry is run by the scoreboard app. Now, Oregon Lottery has been trying to decide whether to keep it or move on to a different platform. And it looks like they may have been in discussions with DraftKings about this for a while because DraftKings ended all their daily fantasy sports operations in Oregon. Because wasn't in Oregon they were saying there was a question whether fantasy sports was legal? Is yeah, it, there's a legality the whole, question wasn't there. Wasn't the whole and, thing in and Oregon? I think, uh, I think DraftKings is in such a position right now to get the sports betting market like they do in New Hampshire Yeah, uh, that they stop DFS, Daily Fantasy Sports, in the state, and they're going to focus on working out a deal with the Oregon Lottery to, to control the sports betting industry there. Okay. All right. uh, and uh, Fandle, never one to miss a beat, announced that they will continue with their fantasy sports. Okay. So... Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what happens. Fantasy sports people, if you can't get to DraftKings, you also have the option for FanDuel. That's for people in Oregon. Yep. yep. Now let's talk about Washington, D.C. That this is they, very interesting. I like this. I, I actually am very curious to see how this is received by the general public in the district. Uh, I think it's great news in terms of the industry itself, but whether or not the uh, residents of the district actually uh, like it or not, we'll see what happens. The D.C. Lottery announced that four sports betting kiosks have been placed in bars and restaurants in the district. That's great. Four, <laughs> four locations will have a sports betting kiosks on the premises. Then they list them out. Ben's Next Door on U Street, Lou's City Bar on Irving Street Northwest, 
Dirty Water Sports Bar on H Street Northeast. By the way, Dirty Water is a really cool sports bar. If you ever get a chance in D.C. to get to Dirty Water Sports Bar, one of the best bars you can ever is, go is to. Is it a uh, Boston-based kind of – is it a Boston fan bar kind of thing? Because it, it, Dirty Water, it's, uh, that's a big song up in Boston. It's not Love that re- Dirty it's, Water. It's not really uh, – <laughs> No? No, it's, it's not really Boston-based. But it's, no, Well, I'm not Boston-based. I mean like a Boston fan bar. No, not yeah. really. No, not really. okay. And Tacoma Station Tavern on 4th Street Northwest. Now, these machines, these are kiosks only. There's no live person there. Uh, They actually kick out a ticket, like a lottery ticket, when Mm -hmm. you place your bets. Now, where can you redeem these things at? Well, first things first. Okay. You can't use a credit card. No, it's cash cash only. Cash only. All right. 18 years or older. Wow, that's great. Uh, Can place a bet on nearly any sporting event, including the Olympics, which are going on now. All right. Winning tickets can be cashed up to $600 anonymously at the locations. Okay. All right. Anything above that, you got to have an ID and go to the lottery headquarters to collect the winnings. Okay. And uh, just like a lottery ticket, the the D.C. lottery said winning tickets expire after 180 days. All right. So uh, check your tickets. And the lottery expects to have at least 30 more locations by the end of the year. Hey, I hope uh, other states follow suit. Well, Washington, D.C. is not a state, but I hope states follow Washington, well, D.C.'s aren't, guidance. Aren't they looking at making D.C. a state at some point? I, well, I hope so. so. They should. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, let's go over to some deals, which were kind of interesting. Um, let's do the um, simple one first. Uh, actually, this is almost commonplace now. Bet MGM. They announced the signing of uh, former NFL running back Marshawn Lynch as brand ambassador. Okay. Uh, Lynch will be doing marketing campaigns, promotions, fan events, different activations for the BetMGM Sportsbook. Uh, But let's get to two really interesting deals that um, uh, combine sports betting and media. Uh, We have WinBet and Tipico. Now, we don't talk about Tipico too much. No, no, no. Uh, German operator. They are only operating right now in New Jersey. They did a huge deal with Gannett. All right. The media company. It's a big media company. People yeah, will know Gannett better by the uh, one newspapers, really. Newspapers they do, yeah. uh, but you'll know them better by USA Today. They uh, they own the USA Today brand. They own like the Indy Store, the Indy Star, De- Detroit Free Press. And uh, one of the things about the USA Today network of uh, sites and papers they have, they have a huge betting system. Betting USA sites. Today, really? They they have a betting site. I, I have to check out the USA Today uh, betting section then if they have a betting section. They, they have a huge, huge, actually one of the best out there in terms of sports betting reporting. Okay. USA Today. USA okay. Today. Right. I'll check it out. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, let me see, let me see. I believe their site used to be called For the Win. Okay. Uh, their sports betting sections because now it's not going to be that anymore. It's right. going to be rebranded as Bet for the Win, powered by Tipico Sportsbook. So uh, the fact that this is a wide-ranging media deal, it's going to be a five-year deal. Tipico will spend $90 million with Gannett in terms of advertising and affiliate fees. Wow. So uh, it, it's going to be uh, basically uh, you know, plateau numbers. You hit so many customers coming back, they're going to be spending up to $90 million on the deal for five years. Uh, also, uh, Gannett will also have the right to acquire a minority interest in Tipico's U.S. business. That's a that's an interesting little uh, maneuver, and I, I think we saw that in a couple other deals where, in exchange for hitting certain plateaus and over the course of the of the deals, they get uh, majority or uh, not majority but ownership interest in the U.S. operations. By the way, I'm on the uh, USA Today site for the win. Very good section. I got to check well, this out. It will out. no longer be called For the Win. Oh, it's not. Okay. Not For the Win. I, it's okay. going to be rebranded. Like I said, it's going to be rebranded Bet for the Win, powered by Tipico Sportsbook. Okay. Uh, you're going to see Tipico content all across the USA Today network of sports and betting sites beginning at the NFL season. So this deal is starting right away. This wow. is a quick, quick form deal. It's probably been in the works for a month or two, maybe even longer than that, because uh, these deals are not easy to structure. Uh, and also part of the deal that was announced was that Tipico not only will be in New Jersey, they're also going to be launching in Colorado soon, too. Great, great. So they're going to be adding to that 98.8% online handle 
that uh, Colorado seems to report almost every month. Uh, the other big media deal was WinBet. Mm-hmm. Multi-year, multi-platform deal with Cumulus Media. That's actually kind of interesting because it kind of goes with uh, iHeart with their uh, their sports betting uh, channels that sure. they'll be doing, sure. the gamblers and all that stuff. Uh, WinBet uh, will be uh, all across every Cumulus Media uh, outlet, both uh, radio as well as digital. Great. Um, they're going to be seeing a lot of studio sponsorships, local uh, advertising in the uh, different markets or at the radio stations, uh, brand endorsements from the local radio personalities for WinBet, and also they're going to be doing some stuff on site events. You know, that's going to involve the WinBet studio in Encore Vegas. I got to tell you, I'm seeing a lot of their commercials in New Jersey now on TV. So, uh, yeah, Winbre- WinBet is making a big splash. Well, again, it's going to be one of those interesting uh, deals to see exactly how it progresses. WinBet did also deals with different podcast networks. I, I know they did Blue Wire podcast. Yep, they're the official sports book of that. Um, Actually, I think podcast don't they, network. Don't they have a studio in Vegas in That's the Win? Where the Win Vegas right. studio comes into play, where they're going to be doing on site stuff with WinBet. Great. So uh, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting to watch that one develop as well, and. Last deal for the for the week here, and then we'll uh, have to end it right here. Uh, DraftKings they did a deal with Sports and Social, the upscale sports bar chain that's run by the Cordish companies. With it has great great casinos. I mean the one I, I need to know the specific name of it. is it Maryland Live or Live Maryland Casino and Hotel? I know they have one in Philadelphia. Is it Live Philadelphia? Everyone's calling it Philly Live. So I don't know the official name of this thing. Well, it's Live Philadelphia. Live Philadelphia. The one in Maryland is Maryland Live. Maryland Live. Now, this all is part of the the, the sports and social bars. Are yeah, that's part- where the sports and social bars are that I'm familiar well, with. Well, they're anyway. all over the country. Okay, well, that, they're the, those are the two I'm familiar with. The And it's all part of live dining and entertainment. That's the division that runs sports and social. Okay. Uh, they're going to be opening DraftKings branded sports bars in Nashville and Detroit first. Okay. Where they have some really huge sports and social uh, bar restaurants there. I like those combinations. We were in one in New Jersey. It was um what was the it was points bet top golf and top golf. Yeah, top golf and points bet combined and it was such a great place. Great food, you had golf and you have uh points bet's uh, presence there. It was a great uh it was a great scene. I like it. Well, the the one thing that's going to differ between the top golf points bet deal and the DraftKings sports and social deal, the sports and socials are not only in casinos, but they are in sporting venues. There's a couple oh, of stadiums, okay, there's a couple uh concert halls, that sort of stuff. And it's going to be uh they're going to be rebranding not just the name, but they're going to be redesigning some of the venues. They hired a company called iCrave to create an upscale premier sports and entertainment experience. Now, God knows what that means. I don't know what that means either. Uh, that, that is perfect PR speak for they're going to make a really high-end, cool-looking, you know, snazzy little joint that's going to be having uh, sports betting as well as fantasy sports as well as uh, food and drink. Now, the one thing about this, the DraftKings, since they're fantasy, this has a lot more applications than just being a sports book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I mean DraftKings is going to be taking advantage of the 55 million visitors to sports and social places around the country. So this was a great deal. Great, great. Uh, that's it for this week's book report. If you have any news or notes you want us to talk about, info at turnpikesportsradio.com, whatever we didn't get to. And, again, there's a lot more stuff we didn't uh, have the chance to talk about this week. Head on over to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com and click on the blog button. You'll see a print version of the book report. That'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.